So I want to make a quick video tonight to talk about uh, Postgres and using Postgres with uh, Node.js. I have a series of blog posts that I'm doing on uh, how uh, Node.js developers can use uh, Postgres in their projects. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do it is because uh, uh, one of the things when Node started to become popular, one of the things that also started to become popular were these you know, NoSQL databases. And so there's a lot of them out there that are really good. So, for instance, MongoDB is very popular for doing uh, for doing a Node.js development. But I also want to talk a little, little bit more about you know some traditional uh, relational databases, SQL databases. And so one that I've used uh, on and off for the last couple of years has been uh, PostgresDB. And there's a derivative of that that I've started playing around with called TimescaleDB. And I'm going to be doing a presentation in about a week uh, for the Jackson Node user group talking about uh, how you know we can use this database in our development. And so I want to just do a quick, uh, quick example of how you can get this installed and running locally and how you can start running scripts against it. And so let's take a look. So right here I have my terminal window here. And hopefully that's readable. And I'm going to come over here and I just want to show this Docker statement. So what this Docker statement is doing is, uh, this is assuming, of course, that you already have Docker installed in your system. You also have Node.js installed in your system. But what this will do is this will actually run Postgres or Timescale DB inside of a container, a Docker container. And what's handy about that is that if you're like me and I have a development machine, I'll have so many resources. I don't want a database server continuously running in the, in the background. And one of the things Docker lets us do is it lets us kind of run this inside of a container. It gets a run in its native Linux environment. And it makes it a lot easier for uh, being able to play around with stuff as, as a developer. You can just run it in the Docker instance and you're, you're good to go. If we take a look at this statement right here, what this is actually doing is this is telling Docker it wants to run and it's specifying a name here, and the name is going to be dev timescale db. And we're putting in a, a, an environment variable here for Postgres passwords that it can use. And uh, this actually, that space needs to be removed there. We're also specifying a volume here. And so what this is doing is this is mapping a local volume that I have here uh, for storing essentially the, the database for or the data for my Postgres database locally. So when we're going to spin up and spin down the server, the data is still stored locally on my on my machine. And then this last part here, right here, is just mapping a port, and then it's running Postgres. So I am not going to run that because I have already installed and run this. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show the ps command. So what ps does is this will show you any running Docker instances that you have on your machine. In this case, uh, I want to look at, see at an instance that may not be running. So I'm going to specify dash a here. And what this does is actually returns back a couple different uh, uh, a couple different instances of some uh, some servers and stuff that I've been running. And so we can see right here that one of these is this dev timescale db. So if I want to start that up. I can just come over here. I can say Docker start dev timescale db, and this will actually start up that instance. So now, if I come back here and I type in Docker ps, we can see that instance is actually running. And if you're using a tool, uh, I like to use uh, Table Plus. Uh, let's see if I can move that over here. So I already have some things here that I have uh, configured, but what I don't have is I don't have a specific database I need for using for development. So what I'm going to do before I go run table plus, I want to make sure that I create a database that I can use. So I can do that by coming over here and I'm going to say docker exec. And what this is doing is this is using the terminal here to go into this running instance and I'm specifying psql user postgres. So if I come over here and I run this, I'm now uh, actually uh, logged into the, the Docker container uh, and I have access to the Postgres database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type create database and we'll call this ETFDB. 
and that's created a database. Now, if I want to, I can just come over here. I can type slash C and the database name and get and get in here to, to do that. But uh, what I want to do is I want to show how you can use this with Node. So I am going to exit out of that and just to confirm that it's still running. It's still running. Now I can go over to the table plus. Here's table plus. And I think, yeah, I can use this connection here. So if I come here and open this up, we can see there's no tables in here yet. And so what we want to do is we want to be able to create some tables. So I am going to open up Visual Studio Code here. This is a little bit hard to read, so I'm going to blow this up a little bit. And what this script is actually doing here uh, is it's actually importing in uh, this module. This module here, the PG module, is the Postgres module. This works really well. And I'm setting up a pool based off of that uh, Postgres module. And then I have a string here which has these create uh, table statements. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple tables here. I'm also going to create an index and a hyper table on here. And so if I want to go ahead and run this, I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to type in node, and this is create tables, run this. Bump. And it ran. So now if I come back to table plus and I hit refresh, we can see these two tables are in here. But there's no data, so I want to add some data here as well. And to do that, I have, oh, all right, I did run this. I have this uh, secondary uh, script here. And what this is actually doing is it's taking uh, three CSV files here, which have all the stock data as far as like uh, what the names of the stocks are, what their symbols, that sort of thing. And then what I'm doing is I'm using this insert statement here to take the data from these CSV files. And each one of these, I'm just reading in and inserting these in using these uh, parameters. So to run this, all I need to do is I can say node import stocks. And that is running. And this will take a while because there's over 7,000 stocks that are there listed. Okay, so it looks like that may be done. So I'm going to come back here. And now what I can do is I can create a query. So I have a query that I've written here. And what this is doing is it's doing a select star from stock. And what that means is that I'm going to select every column that I have on my stock table. And I'm going to limit to the first 100 rows. So I come here and I run this. Boom. There it is. So I have my stocks. So that is kind of like a bare knuckles. This is how you get this installed and running uh, example. Uh, I'm going to do a series of blog posts on this and videos uh, talking about uh, how you can uh, uh, start leveraging and using uh, Postgres. There's some little twi tricks and stuff that you're going to want to use if uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of uh, querying back and forth with the uh, with the database. So with that, uh, if you like this content, you know, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't like it, you can give it a thumbs down, but please give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel, and I can do more videos like this. It helps the algorithm, and uh, I'm trying to do everything I can to get YouTube to promote these videos. So uh, please subscribe. With that, have a nice day.